What is up everybody? And welcome back to day number 18 of Vlogmas. And as you can see, I got a half snowy field behind me. And I actually asked you guys for some questions because I'm doing a little Q&A. So I have about 10 questions I'm gonna answer. Uh, most of them are form related since I got the field behind me. I'll try to uh, answer them to the best of my knowledge. So let's jump into it. Okay, on the first question we got Zach Lyons Wade asking it and he wrote on a backhand drive, how do I make sure that my weight is transferred onto the heel of my plant foot when throwing the disc? All right, let me tell you. Okay guys, I'm gonna do some POV right here and I'm gonna mimic the X step. So when I do an X step, I go left foot, right foot, and then I'm gonna cross my foot over. And then when I plant, notice the angle of my foot. It is at at least 90 degrees. See that? Most players plant with their toe open and guess what that does? It doesn't really work if you're just doing <laughs> that. That looks funny. Um, so if you're trying to wait, if you're trying to do your weight transfer with your toe open, that's just going to basically send your disc up in the air and you don't really want that. And it's a real easy fix. You make sure your foot is planted at at least 90 degrees because that locks in your hips. That helps you get the hips engaged. Um, ideally, so Zach's question basically is, how, how does he transfer his weight onto the heel of his back foot? He needs to plant his foot at at least 90 degrees or spin it around a bit. So what I like to do, I plant with my toe first and guess what that does? That drops my heel down and then I rotate and that locks this leg out and it allows me to get the most power out of my lower body. Next question is by Dominic T. And he asks, what's the best way to improve and increase spin on a power shot? So this is this question I get a lot and people are always just obsessed with spin, power and everything. And you know, obviously you wanna throw far. That's everyone's dream. And there's ways that you can achieve that, but I've never thought about it as just adding spin to my drive. So I'll do my best to say, to give you some tips, but what it comes down to is hitting the field, hitting the course, and make sure you are thrown with proper technique. So the best thing I can say to that, watch all the videos you can, film yourself, put your form side by side with a pro, and that will reveal all the things that you're doing wrong and that's basically the best advice I can give. But basically Zach's question before, that's one way to increase your spin is to get your lower body engaged, to get a proper reach back. Um, I'll talk about that more in the video. So basically, you know, hit the field, make sure you're throwing with the right technique and uh, questions coming up in this video will hopefully give you some tips to help you do that. Okay, Jordan P asks, how exactly do you throw a hyzer flip? People always say going hyzer flip and I'm not sure what it is yet. Okay, to describe a hyzer flip, basically you are throwing a disc and your speed, the speed of your throw is greater than what the disc can handle. So if you throw a disc on a hyzer, it's gonna flip up if the disc isn't that stable for your arm speed. So for example, this is an FD3 and I'm gonna throw it, I'm gonna, let's see, I wonder how well you can track it, but you can see I'm just throwing an easy hyzer out there. I would have to throw that disc so much harder to maybe get it to flip, but this disc, which is in essence, it's a very understable driver. I'll probably, I'm gonna try to throw it pretty much the same way in a hyzer. And since it's more understable, it's going to want to flip up. <laughs> see, I released that on a hyzer and it's tracking to the right. You might not be able to see it, but it did do that. So essentially, you can hyzer flip technically any disc if you have enough speed, but 
For the average person, you're gonna to wanna to throw an understable disc on a hyzer and it's going to flip up to flat and depending on your arm speed or how much touch you throw it, it'll flip to the right more or hyzer back. The next question is from Andrew Kipps and he wrote, what is a good way to break the habit of rolling your wrist on four hands? So, one thing that I can recommend is, or actually two things, Throw more understable discs. You think that's counterintuitive, but that's going to really expose you and show that you are rolling your wrist over on four hands. So for example, this disc is a really beat up MD3, and I'm gonna throw it on a slight hyzer on a forehand. And what I did there, I released with my palm to the sky. It's a very good drill to get used to. So when you're throwing a forehand, release with your palm facing up. Because if your palm's facing down, guess what? You just rolled your forehand over. So two things, learn with understable discs, and then two, palm facing the sky. Moving on to the next question is by Mr. Crozenator. Don't know if I said that right, but he said, Eagle, I'm struggling to throw nose down slash flat. I can throw a disc 400 plus feet on flat ground, but in the wind, I have no control. How do I throw more nose down slash flat? Honestly, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I will give you a few tips to hopefully uh, fix your problem. The way you adjust nose angle, there's a bunch of different ways to do it in your throw. Uh, basically starting from your shoulders down, the shoulders, your reach through, you wanna make sure you have a straight pull through across your chest. That's going to be very important on releasing the nose down. Wrist angle, you can obviously try to mimic the nose down with the wrist uh, or nose up. The grip, all right, we're, we're moving to the other side. Grip affects nose angle as well. Usually if you have your thumb farther out in the middle of the disc, you're gonna release with the nose up closer to the edge it's going to help you keep the nose down but if you want a nice flat shot i recommend something in the middle of the disc um, and obviously your lower body has a lot to do with it and if you go back to the earlier question i'm not gonna i'm not gonna rehash that too much but essentially make sure your lower body is engaged by planting your foot at at least 90 degrees you don't want your toe opening up because then you're going to lose all the power you are generating with your lower body and the last thing i will say to the question just go out in the field practice reps are going to be your best friend all right mr cool 2118 writes what should you do during field practice? I feel like I always just throw all my discs as far as I can without coming up with some sort of plan or strategy to get better. Do you have a certain routine? Okay, so as I'm talking, I'm going to do a little B-roll. Um, so I'll just talk over that. But a few different ways you can maximize the efficiency of your field work is to uh, get four different cones, or you can even use discs and set them up, make like a, a quote island and really be focused on throwing discs into one spot. Uh, for the example of the video, I'm just gonna be throwing back at my bag, trying to throw them as close to my bag as possible. Um, if you have a field with trees, you can even shape um, some lines by creating some, uh, some gap, gap shots. That will be beneficial to your game. But you know, really, it's about how much discipline you go out into the field with. Uh, you have to you have to have some rules for yourself. Maybe have a set number of throws, a set number of drivers you throw, mid ranges, anhyzers, flat shots, hyzers. I don't necessarily have a set way I do it every time, but I can tell you that I have gone to the field with the ambitions of throwing flat shots better, throwing hyzer shots better, anhyzers. So it's basically what shot you wanna work on and, you know, limiting yourself to the amount of throws you make, uh, but make sure you do it with some sort of discipline. Okay, the next question is by Christian Martin. He says, how do you fix a rounded pull through? This is a good question, and I know how to do it, but it's hard. The reason I say this, uh, I did a lefty only round a while back, and let me actually just throw uh, a shot right here. 
or let me throw two shots. I'm gonna throw one lefty and one righty and you're gonna see. So righty, I'm just going to throw a shot that doesn't really have any rounding. Like no problem, right? I'm gonna make sure I watch where that goes because it's a white disc in the snow. One sec. And now I'm gonna throw this lefty shot and I'm probably gonna round a little bit even though I'm going to try not to. That was so bad. That was such a bad shank. I was actually trying not to. It was my first lefty throw of the day and it actually hurt. Warm up guys, I did but I'm starting to cool down. It's harder to just do but really, it's gonna be uncomfortable. Uh, the trick is you don't think of it as a reach back. You think about it as a reach out. So everyone's always trying to reach back as far as they can and you know, that's a lot of the time they have good intentions, but usually when you reach back, just the, the nature of our body, when we reach back, we're gonna curl in a little bit. So don't reach back as far as you can. Think about pushing the disc out away from you and then bringing it in your chest. And by doing that is if you look, a lot cleaner shot, your body doesn't get in the way, and it's overall just better. So it's not a reach back, it's a reach out. The next question is by Megan Mercier. I don't know if I said that right, sorry if I butchered your name. She asks, if you had to describe to a total beginner how to imagine throwing a sidearm, what would you say? How about advice for someone who can throw a sidearm decently but just doesn't get the distance? slash speed. When you look at a sidearm technique, the most similar motion is almost like throwing a baseball. It's almost like you're a pitcher. Uh, on average, it's probably a little bit lower if you're throwing a sidearm, but it's very similar to like a baseball throw. Gosh, the camera's falling over. It's very similar to, let's say, a baseball throw or even, uh, you know, swinging a tennis racket. I don't have that much sports background in those, so you know, forgive me if I'm, I'm butchering it, but think of it like a baseball throw. It's very similar, just bringing your elbow a little bit lower. To help people get some more distance, I already made a sidearm breakdown where I go into as much depth as you know I feel comfortable going into, but two main takeaways, or let's say three main takeaways from the the video are make sure your wrist is cocked back make sure you are bringing your arm back but not too far tucking in your elbow and planting your foot hard into the ground to explode forward and one other thing all these questions are kind of uh i'd say mushing together a little bit uh if you remember me saying keep your palm to the sky that is important too because that's going to help you develop a more usable sidearm and it's going to prevent injury in the long run next question is by james clark and he asks how do i throw higher on my back hands but still keep the nose down another question about the nose angle hopefully james uh what i said helps you a little bit the thing i'll say about the nose angle is just know the angle of your desk keeping Basically, when you throw a disc on a big hyzer, you're not really keeping the nose down just because in order for the disc to go high in the air, you're putting it high up. So that's basically, you know, that's, that's showing you have power. You see players who are able to throw high shots, get the disc to flip up and ride. That's because they know what their discs do stability-wise. So. I don't know how well you could just see the shot I just threw, but if that was like an essence or something understable, it would go out, nose up, but when it flips over, you're gonna put the nose down. And let me adjust the camera a little bit. I'm gonna throw this here FD2 high up, but on an Anheuser, and if you notice right now, the nose is pointing down. So let me throw it high up. And then it's going to drift down to the right 
I don't know how well you can see that, but you no, know, essentially it's more knowing the stability of your discs and the angles you release them on. It's not because you know your body's out of whack or that could be a fact, but if you're focused on straight pull through, you know, having a good grip and getting your lower body engaged by planting the uh, your foot at least at 90 degrees, then those should help you out a lot. All right, we got one more question. It's kind of a funny one uh, before we get to the giveaway. And that is by Loyal Harris. And they wrote, would you rather have your body odor change based on how your mood, i.e. you smell good when you feel good, bad when you feel bad, or have your body odor change as you age, i.e. the older you are, the worse you smell. Not just golf related, just a question I ask most people. You ask that to most people? That's hilarious. Um, I think I would probably, I would want it based on my mood. You know, people would really know when you're putting up a stink. So, yeah. The one question is, what if you feel good and you fart? Would that make your fart smell good? All right, guys, let's head over the giveaway. <laughs> okay, guys, we're at the giveaway portion of the video. And yesterday, I asked you guys, what is your favorite Discmania disc? And the winner of the Iron Samurai 2 MD3 supplied by Mike Kemp is Jameson Monroe and he wrote P2 although MD3, FD3 and DD3 are all staples to my bag but I couldn't play a round on any course without a P2. He's got that right the P2 is a great disc so Jameson message me on Instagram or Facebook and I'll give your info to Mike Kemp to send that MD3 out. Unfortunately, I won't be able to sign it, but if you want Mike Kemp to sign it, then, uh, you know, have at it. Um, okay, so today's giveaway, you know, I feel like I don't give the Europeans enough love. So, giveaway is strictly for Norwegians, and I want to shout out uh, a fellow disc maniac, Casey Harlan. He's going to be giving away this Imperial Eagle 3. I met him uh, last year when I was in Norway, and he's a, a big Discmania guy over in Norway. So he's going to be supplying a giveaway for you guys in Norway. So if you're not Norwegian or don't live in Norway, please don't comment on this post because that'll just make my life a lot harder. But if you are Norwegian, please post the most beautiful place in Norway, in your opinion, so I can have uh, some uh, some places that I can hit up when I come this coming year for the Sula slash PCS Open. I can't wait to get there. So shout out to Casey for uh, supplying that disc. And yes, guys, um, until tomorrow for day number 19 of Vlogmas. Keep on dreaming and peace. Owner of the disc mania.